What's going on guys? Welcome to another modern video here on uh, YouTube.com slash Frank Laporte or Twitch.tv slash Frank Laporte. Whichever one you're looking at, doesn't matter. And today we're playing a critique, uh, commissioned critique deck by Red the Raven. It is uh, Sarkhan's Unsealing and Modern. And uh, voice is deeper and velvety probably because I uh, have not, uh, I haven't warmed up the pipes yet, uh, so to speak. And uh, we're going to be playing Heartless Summoning and Sarkhan's Unsealing in the same deck. And most of the cards that are lowered, I, I just said this on the stream and then I forgot I wasn't recording, so now you guys are going to, everyone who's watching on stream gets to hear it again. Um, <clears throat> so all the cards that are, all the cards that are going to trigger Sarkhan's Unsealing still do so with Heartless Summoning. This is a 4-4, four, four. this is a 4-4, four, four. this is a 7-7, seven, seven. these are 4-5s, and so on and so on. And then Death Shadow, you know, whatever you can manage getting Death Shadow to, but... Deck looks pretty sweet. Uh, we have Street Wraith both to facilitate Death Shadow and to get us closer to more important cards. Same thing with Faithless Looting and Night's Whisper. They all do the the damage slash card drawing thing. So uh, yeah, looking forward to playing this guy, seeing how it does, and uh, let's let's jump right in. <clears throat> And then we wait. Oh, if unsealing is a cast trigger, effects that modify, yeah, so it doesn't even matter. So everything I just said there, just disregard it because it's true no matter what. I think we'll keep this. We have a Street Wraith and uh, we only need a second. Like, this is actually a reasonable Gurmag Angler. First turn Street Wraith into Thoughtseize. And then they're just going to assume we're Death Shadow at that point. I really don't... We probably want a green or a red, so we're probably going to get an Overgrown Tomb. This is going to be painful. Nope, let's get a black here. What? Oh boy. Hmm. Well, this looks frightening. I'm gonna take this bird of paradise because it doesn't look like you have enough mana to do anything. <clears throat> well, that's a thing. All right, wooded foothill gone. I drew a bird of paradise. I bet you did. I bet you did. Oh, that's a dude. Nope, we're not casting this guy. Land off the tippity top. Hey, wow, we're really good at this game. That's amazing. That's incredible. <clears throat> Do we just want a Night's Whisper here and go down to like nine? Feels bad, man. All right, one thing I'm realizing is we take a lot of damage. That's, uh... Okay, okay. Gurmag Angler can come down next turn, I believe. We can Faithless Looting and then Gurmag Angler. <clears throat> so, theoretically, they're going to play Burning Tree Emissary. Well, if they, if they only hit a land... Yep, they did. All right, so we know five of the six cards in their hand. Burning Tree... We know four of the five cards in their hand into nothing. Seems good. All right. Man, these are some good draws. Actually, Death Shadow Gurmag Angler is pretty good here, I imagine. I'm going to get rid of the Soul Gorger and the Mirror Superior on here. We can go to seven, we can Thought Seize, go to five. Our hand, I think our creatures are just way too big right now. Yeah, I think going to five is fine here. I don't foresee us taking any more damage after this. 
Bloodbraid elves are scary, for sure. I think I'm more scared of Eternal Witness because they just Eternal Witness back the Steel Leaf Champion, which gives them another turn. Plus, they can't necessarily cast anything but Eternal Witness next turn anyway. <clears throat> All right, all right. So what do we know? We, you, you drew a forest, that's pretty good. All right, so we know your entire hand. So your hand is Bloodbraid Elf, Bloodbraid Elf, Nykthos. Seems good. <laughs> do we just go to three and then Gurmag Angler? Five, six, seven. The problem with doing this, <clears throat> the problem with, with actually doing any of these two is going to three just almost kills us because we have one blocker, so we block here and we take five. I actually don't think we can attack here, to be quite honest. One, two, three, four, five, six. We do not have enough. We also don't have enough even mana for Sarkhan's Unsealing here, which is unfortunate. I mean, I think it's... Actually, I guess we can just play Gurmag Angler for not a lot. The Bloodbraid Elf next turn is going to be pretty problematic. So I don't think we can attack here, but <clears throat> I feel like there is going to be a point where we can attack. It's not right now. Two, three, delve for five, four. Yeah, that's better. Two, three, four. So now we still have four cards. We can thought seize next turn and play another Gurmag Angler. We just want to be able to play both of them. Yep, <clears throat> there's that. Here comes one of your two Bloodbraid Elves. Oh. Wow, that's a great hit. <laughs> that's a pretty unbelievable hit there. And an Arbor Elf. You got it. So you, we know you have Bloodbraid Elf in hand. Alright, so we can put you in top deck mode and then have three guys. We'll be at three life. We'll have three blockers. We can go block, 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 and then we die. Okay. So... <clears throat> I'm pretty sure we're dead because they just have too many haste creatures. That is unfortunate. Alright. Well, we tried. Abrupt Decay definitely comes in. Fatal Push definitely comes in. Mere Superion might be a little too cute in this particular situation. Hmm. Like brutality might be able to come in, but I don't think so. It's just going to kill a 2-2. Two, two. Keep the Soul Gorger because we, at least we can cast it. And if we do hit a Sarkhan's on ceiling, it's pretty good. I think we just want, might, might want more land in here, to be quite honest. Remember that time I went over the deck not once but twice and Pernicious Dude still didn't remember that I had uh, Death Shadow in the deck? That's kind of funny. Let's try it again. Oh, uh, I do like this hand a little better. I will keep it. I think black is definitely our primary color. So we're probably going to get a blood crypt here. Well, not only exactly Heartless Summoning, but we also have Sylvan Carry added. So there you go. You figured it out. <clears throat> I 
It's hard to put in cards like Birds of Paradise, though, if you're playing Heartless Summoning. Oh. Might just do that. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I'm not super interested in taking a bunch of life early. We can do that later. I am interested in this, though. Tracker is good. Visionary is good. Burning Tree Emissary is good. I'm just going to take the Emissary. It's just a free card for you. No. <clears throat> Actually, maybe it was Tracker. So, play Forest, play I'm sorry, sure. Or Visionary, rather. Oh. Huh. Fascinating. I mean, there's going to land Tracker, and we do have a chance to kill it. So I think we could take out the Mere Superions, put in more uh, Phyrexian Snowflakes. Whatever that dude's called. Snow Soul Gorger. Uh, we can put that up to four, and then we can actually have more lands in the deck. I think I might want to... like Street Wraith is only good if you're going on the Death Shadow Planet, but I feel like we're not... Hmm. Fascinating. All right, so. Hmm. What is this? <laughs> oh man, heartless summoning, buddy. That's fair, I should have messaged you. You're right, you're right. I kinda just wanna Knight's Whisper here. What is it? Oh. Oh. Hello. We could just Thought Season take the... I was going to actually save the uh, the Bloodstained Mire to the Fatal Push. I guess we can actually still do that. Steel Leaf. Alright, we're going to take Tireless Tracker because it gives you perks. So now your hand is these three idiots. Alright. We're just going to Fatal Push the other guy and then we're probably going to just win this game handily. Two strikes. What was my first strike? How dare you? You are unbelievable. Yeah. Attack me for two. Do it. Oh, Death Shadow is not cute because it is a cast trigger. So, regardless of whatever this modifier this gets, it's always going to trigger this. That's pretty insane. Maybe you can just assume that I'm always playing Heartless Summoning decks, Mike. You played a Wooded Footerinos. Alright, Wooded Foothills, Tireless Tracker. All, everything's gone. I wonder if I even play... I don't actually even have to crack it, right? I can just literally go Sarkon. I don't have a land, though, so I do want to kill this guy, I guess. We also want to make our guy bigger, so. Hmm. I wonder if just... I, I, getting a Swamp is probably fine here. Land. Dang it. Well, we're just going to play Unsealing anyway, so. And just hope they don't go Bloodbraid Elf into Sarkhan. Actually, it doesn't matter. If they can't find an answer to Sarkhan's Unsealing. Ooh, boy. That's a spicy meatball. It is not Scred Dragons, but it, it's close. A relic of Progenitus. All right. You got it. So long, graveyard.
Huh. So we can actually go Heartless Summoning Ronus Death Shadow, right? That seems pretty good. So we do this. We can go this guy. You want it all, but you can't have it. And then shoot your face. Why even cast it? Because we're able to cast... Well, because we can do more things. I don't know. Why not? And we have nine power there at nine. Seems fine. We also Knight's Whisper make this a 9-9 nine, nine by itself. Yeah, theoretically it's probably uh, totally reasonable to not cast. That's surprisingly awkward. Well, they have to block one of these guys, and we can always pump the Death Shadow, so... Let's not... That was an amazing draw. <sighs> really? Fascinating. That was not the correct choice. <laughs> That's... That was not... Not where you wanted to be. Shame scoop incoming. Nope. All right. I'm just going to pass here. I don't really want to go to five. They could have Bloodbraid Elf into something else. And they have Keswick Wolf on board, so. Spirit Guide is tempting. Like, just being able to play Sarkons on ceiling sooner is really what you want to do, I think. My problem is that Sarkons, yep, that's what we were worried about. Eternal Witness, getting back Rurikthar, maybe? The funny thing is, any, uh, any Phyrexian Soul Gorger or Death Shadow just wins us the game. So this is pretty much game then, because we just get to play Stomp and Grunt, and then give Death Shadow Trample. Seems good. Yep. All right. You thought that? Oh, you thought this was five? It's only four. Yeah. What is it? I like Liliana, but I don't like having to. Uh, Having to deal with them sacrificing like an elvish visionary. I do like brutality though, because they might bring in things for uh, enchantments now. I'm not a big faithless looting fan. It's good for angler, but we only have two anglers. Like, angler also feels like a weird choice, but I guess it's. It's five power and it's pretty easy to tr to 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 delve. Try these guys.
This hand seems good. We'll keep this. Yeah, the problem with Hunted Horror is, like, you'd cast it, it would trigger and kill everything, and then they'd still get two guys after that. So, like, not really ideal. If Hunted Horror had a cast trigger, I'd be a little more inclined to, uh, to try that dude out. Man, Utopia Sprawls dot deck over here. Yep, you got it. And they're just gonna burn a point. Man, I don't think this is even that great against us. Like we literally just have two Grand Mag Anglers, and we took out the Faithless Looting. So this is not a card I am that upset about I'm pretty sure next time we just go heartless into carry added I guess we could crack the verdant catacomb but I do like keeping it up for for fatal push yeah we're gonna give it one more turn Yep. Five mana. All right. Well, we have an abrupt decay, so I'm not too concerned with uh, big boys. I guess we're just getting a blood crypt here. I feel like maybe it could have been a stomping ground. We have two green cards. Sure. <laughs> There's only two Gurmag Anglers in the deck. I'm not super concerned with Relic or Progenitus here. Let's Thought Seize you and see what we're working with first. Yep. That was perfect. Good lord. All right, well. <laughs> now they're like, okay, well now I need something else. Wow, that was, that was a good hit at a, at a good time. All right, okay. And this is a lot of mana for Kessig Wolfron. Four one, you got it. Oh boy. Can we survive? One, two, three. One, two, and then there one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We go to five. Yeah, this should be fine. We also need to draw a guy, though, so... We could have actually just went Fatal Push Abrupt Decay and Sylvan Carry added. Now we can do all three. But... Okay. So we go to four if they want to crack their Windswept Teeth and be super aggressive about it. Oh, they don't. Interesting. 
They just topped like another Inferno Titan. Rourke Thar. <sighs> what even, man? What even? We actually can't we can't take six here. We're just gonna have to play Sylvan Carry added. Yeah, that's pretty brutal. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I guess we can try to double block. Actually if we just block with uh Death Shadow, it should actually survive, right? They give it trample, we take a million, Death Shadow becomes like a 30-30. Does this work the way I think? Oh. It's actually fine, I guess. Now we have 6-6, six, six. okay. That did not work out the way they wanted it to, or it did because they want to play something else and they just wanted to give it trample. I can't tell. Uh, we definitely can't push Rorkthar. That is definitely not how that works. Not only that, we would actually die. So I don't understand why you would say that. Like the the different reasons we can't do that are uh, are numerous. <laughs> Yeah, at the same time it checks to see if this dies, it also checks to see what its power and toughness is. So damage is dealt, right? It takes three, I take X. Uh, State-based effects are checked. And then it says, okay, this guy's an 8 it, it lives, you took three damage, the end. Oh, we could target Rorikthar. I mean, that doesn't seem great, though. Good lord. We'd go to three. God, can we go to four? I don't even know if we can go to four. We can, like, block here and then block here, but then this guy just absolutely destroys us. Like, we actually have to do this, I think. And we have to hit something that we can cast. Creature one time. That's not it. Let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. Yeah, this is brutal. Rorkthar is a hell of a drug. Yep. Kessig Wolf. They had to have Kessig Wolf around. They have to have Rorkthar, and then they had to hit Steel Leaf Champion. Like. Otherwise, we block here, block here. We can try to kill this guy with the Fatal Push or something, but uh, even that doesn't work. Why do they keep doing it for zero? This is very strange. Like, just to give Trample? Like, I guess it's exact, but... Alright, I don't like the Faithless Looting. Soul Gorger might be pretty good. Like, it costs one mana with a Heartless Summoning, and it still actually triggers everything. The problem is it doesn't stay around, so it's literally just a, like a one and done. I feel like Ronus is almost even better because of that. I 
Actually, I think Noob Noob, I actually think you were correct. If we if we fatal push the Rurik Thor, we would have went to three, but we would have also had a six six. We would have had a nine nine. Curious as to why not target Rurik with push life goes from yeah, like because I forgot. Because because I didn't know why. That's why. Because <laughs> Why didn't you make this very nuanced play that is actually not super intuitive because Fatal Push would not kill the creature? Well, because I didn't think about it at the time, that's why. This is literally my first time playing this deck, and I very rarely play against Rorkthar, and I very rarely target creatures with Fatal Push that won't die to Fatal Push. So, uh, My problem with Nyx is that it's always cost black. Well, by the time they played the champ, we were at, we weren't at nine anymore. We were at six, so we couldn't do that. We would die. Um, next to this double black, it doesn't get the full reduction from heartless summoning, which is a kind of annoying. Um. Mere Superion is just weird. If you have Heartless Summoning, it's great. If you don't, it's meh. My problem is, like, a lot of these cards are great with a Sarkhan's Unsealing. And then a lot of them are good with a Heartless Summoning. Or Sarkhan's Unsealing. Did I say Unsummoning? I don't know what I said. A lot are good with, with a Sarkhan's Unsealing. A lot of good with Heartless Unsummoning. But some are not good without the other. Right? Like, Mere Superion is great with both, but it's not good at all without Heartless Summoning. Phyrexian Soulgorger is great with Heartless Summoning, but it's not good at all with... Heartless summoning just because it's doesn't do anything. Gamma said, "Thank you so much for the resub. Really appreciate it. Welcome, welcome." By the time they played Steel Leaf Champion, we were already at six life. We would have died no matter what we cast. Yeah, we could have. Yeah, if we if we had seen the fatal push line, we actually would have probably won that game pretty handily. So actually, I think that's a... I would consider that a victory. Worth noting. Heartless Unsealing. That's probably a better deck name. I guess that's what it's called. Huh. Alright. Um... Tasker is not good because Tasker with the Heartless Summoning is only 3 4 and it doesn't trigger anything. Gurmag Angler is infinitely better than Tasker. Traxos, however, I do like. Traxos costs. Oh, uh, Traxos is also a 6 6 with the Heartless Summoning. That's also bad. The problem is you need creatures to actually trigger Sarkons on Ceiling. Like, the, the thing about Soul Gorger is that it becomes a 7 7 with a, whole, with a Heartless Summoning so that you can trigger this. It's still a cast trigger. I think they may have overlooked that. Because Traxos just seems infinitely better than Soul Gorger, right? Like, it's actually just a stronger creature by a lot of metrics. Huh. Huh. That's interesting. I can, my problem is that you do we have enough ways to untap it? I don't know. We have Aronis. Tassiger would untap it. Mere Superion would untap it. Uh, no. Unsealing wants 4 power and 7 power. Palakorm, yeah. Well. <laughs> oh, man. I, I feel like we might not be casting a Palakorm. Interesting. Let me look up Jun cards with 7 power. Let's see if we can find anything good. Okay, advanced search. Uh, black, red, green. 
convert a magazine school doesn't matter. This is gonna be rough. Prices. Where's the? How do you do this? They recently changed Magic Cards and Info to uh, to Scryfall, and Scryfall is great, but it's kind of confusing. Like there's a lot more going on, and it's all in different places. And I'm old. So, okay, here we go. Power equal to greater than or equal to seven. Okay, we did it. Format modern. What? No, not only those colors. Oh god. Allow partial matches. There we go. Okay, only 127, surprisingly. There's 127 modern cards with power 7 or greater. So that's that's good to know. Borborygmos is an option. The, the problem with a lot of these is that we're not going to be casting them. Carnage Tyrant is a thing. We do want the cheap ones. We're looking for guys that cost like... Desecration Elemental is an 8-8 for 4 mana. Whenever a player casts a spell, sacrifice a creature. That's pretty bad. It is an 8-8 fear guy, though. If that guy survives. Woo! Like, the problem is we have 20 lands, so our odds of actually being able to... We already went over next to the... Uh, the, the odds of being able to cast a Carnage Tyrant, even if we have a Heartless Summoning, it still costs 4 mana. Still pretty ideal. Like, we still have to have a pretty ideal situation to be casting a Carnage Tyrant. Hmm. The highest CMC you're considering? I, I don't have a 7. Like, just enough to trigger Sarkons on ceiling. That's the ceiling for us. That's the unsealing for us. Gristle brand. Cosmic Larva is, uh... How come that's not showing? Oh, there it is. There's that weirdo. One red red at the beginning of your upkeep. Sacrifice unless you sacrifice two lands. That's fascinating. What if we just make this more of a control deck with a bunch of, like... What if we, like, get rid of the Death Shadow package? I guess Death Shadow's just gonna be good anyway. I did not include colorless cards. All right, let's do that. There's probably going to be more now. There was 827. That was 169. Good lord. Nice. Um, yeah, Bane of Balagan costs 7. So, like, even with even with Heartless Summoning, it's going to cost 5. And it's just not... It's just too high. I'm going to look for casting cost. Converted mana cost. Less than or equal to 5. Now we only have 20. 20 cards that cost 5 or less. Eater of Days. We can just play Eater of Days and skip our next two turns. Oh, Mogus could be nice. Just a black red as long as your devotion. I don't think our devotion would ever be 7. I still think that's pretty good, though. Wow, Mogus seems great. Also, Mogus with Traxos? Oh, boy. Now we're talking. Okay, okay. Now we're getting somewhere. I don't think I care about Street Wraith. Street Wraith is just here to facilitate Death Shadow, and I'd really rather just have a better card. I have to trade for another Mogus. I'm I'm one Mogus shy, so here's hoping Moguses are like point zero zero six cents. Yeah, you take those energy cards. All right. Come on, Mogus. Be nice and cheap for your for your buddy. Thirty four cents. Woo. How much is Ronus? Still probably like two dollars or something. A dollar eighty. How much trade do I have here? 
Oh, I have no tradable tickets. Well, that's unfortunate. All right, so we're going to put you back. Deal. What? One far rank bug. <laughs> oh, Kerwin, I'm sorry, buddy. I don't know why I missed that, actually. Is my volume too low? That's weird. Did it show up? Did it pop? Did you guys see it? All right. Yeah, if we're adding Tassigers and Anglers and getting rid of all the Heartless Summoning Packages, the deck's a totally different deck, and we're not playing the same deck. And we're also not, um, like, it's just a total, it's just not even a, like, you might as well just take out the Sarkons on Ceiling and just play Grixis then. Waning Worm, a 7-6 with Vanishing 2. So it comes into play with two time counters. At the beginning of your upkeep, you take one, it has one. When the last one's... So you get one attack, and then you take off the other one. Yeah, that's not great. Cut everything and play Crack Clan Ironworks. Why are you the way that you are? Hunt and Troll's pretty huge. I don't want to give them four one ones though. That's pretty scary. Hunted Horror is also pretty huge, but I don't want to give them centaurs either. So, boy, it's a real tricky situation there. Boldware Heavyweights. What does this guy do? Trample eight eight. When it comes into the, into play, each opponent may search their library for a creature card and put it into play. Then each player who searched shuffles their library. So it's an eight eight with trample. But then they get a free guy afterwards. Hmm. It's pretty scary. I guess we can up the casting cost. What do we say? Four? Oh, we said less than five. Okay, so we'll say equal to five. I meant less than or equal to five, so I guess we can see the five mana options. Blitz Hellion will definitely be here. Changeling Titan, Ayumi. <sighs> Etch Monstrosity enters the battlefield. Oh, Etch Monstrosity could be interesting, actually. Why not Hollow One? Um, Hollow One could actually be good. So probably we have no way to discard it. Like we had Faithless Looting, but I'm also more inclined to play more seven power creatures than four power creatures because that seems like it's more fun. We can play Leveler. Remove your library from the game when it comes into play. Hmm. I feel like the only green we have is for Sylvan Carriad and Ronus. I wonder if that's even worth it. Like, Hollow One's pretty unimpressive by itself is the problem. Like, if you're just playing them for three mana with a Heartless Summoning... Crumbling Colossus is a 7-4 for 5 that you sacrifice at the end of the turn when it attacks. That's not... I don't hate that. Thought Knots here could be good. Gristlebrand, obviously not going to ever cast a Gristlebrand because we have 20 lands in our deck. Force of Savagery is pretty hilarious. Hmm. Can we just play Yargle for the memes? Yeah, I don't like the Mere Superion. Like, you just have to have... I don't like any card that you have to have a Heartless Summoning for. I agree with that. Spectral Force is a thing. I mean, I, we'd have to retweak the mana, though, I think. Double green is rough. Emrakul the Promised End. I mean, that is definitely a card that we could cast. I don't know uh, if we'd ever actually be able to... Or a card you can play. I don't know if we would be able to cast it, though. How would we ever cast an Emrakul? It's 13 mana. Let's say we have a Heartless Summoning. It costs 11. At most, we're probably going to have a creature, a land, 
and maybe a sorcery. Is there any a creature a, a sorcery and maybe is there any instance in our deck even? There's no instance in the deck. So okay, let's say an artifact, right? We have three types in the graveyard. So Emrakul costs ten, and then she costs eight with a heartless summoning out. How are we getting to eight mana? <laughs> Someone explain the eight mana to me. Well, there's no natural order in modern, unfortunately. My god. Yeah, Nix the Thid's great, but it's I don't like the double black is the problem. It should be fine, but I mean, I'm just unimpressed with Nix the Thid in general. Mogus seems great. I feel like these Soul Gorgers could be definitely something else. I just don't know what they could be. I feel like Etch Monstrosity is pretty cool here. It's a five, five it's a five five for five. But it comes in a, like it's when you cast it, it's a ten ten. Huh. Interesting. I think we definitely want more lands, that's for sure. Um I'm going to add another Stomping Ground, and I'm going to add another, actually, maybe just another Forest. Etch Champion also untaps Traxos, which is kind of cool. We have Etched Oracle, that's not it. It's not Etch Champion, Etch Monstrosity. Two of those guys in here. And we might just want an Artifact to to cast Traxos off of or to, to to ramp us rather probably like something for red green this guy might just be better as Fort Nix the Thids I'm going to be honest with you Like, I think Red the Raven might not have realized that uh, it's a cash trigger, so that, like, you don't need eight power guys and five power guys. You need four. I don't. I like I like Endbringer a lot, but I don't like having to retweak the mana base to have colorless mana, because we have none. Uh, maybe we could take out the Grimag Anglers, not care about the graveyard, and just play... Um, how will you trigger Etch Monstrosity? What do you mean? How do you trigger it? It just enters the battlefield as... Why Heartless Summoning? Because it lets this guy's cost two. And this guy costs one. And this guy costs one. I like one Tassiger. I can see playing one Tassiger. Just because we do a lot of things that are going to the graveyard. Trolling poorly. I mean, to be fair, we could actually have double seven carry added and activate it. It is possible. I mean, if we have blood, if we have three lands and two, so two seven carry added, we can do it. It's not. It's not impossible. And I'm just gonna add one. I guess talismans are probably better than talismans are great because you can also take damage to. Uh, I guess it's Indulgence. I don't think we want the green one. Yeah, it's got to be Indulgence. That just makes sense. Four Thoughtseize, four Death Shadow. Yeah, let's try this. I feel like that was a pretty su pretty substantial retweak there. Oh, I am Deadpool. Deadpool is like the bacon of comic book characters. I don't understand the absurd, like, extensive obsession people have with Deadpool. Like, he's a cool character. I appreciate Rob Liefeld's contribution to the Marvel Universe, but, you know, it's a little a little excessive, I think. I want to mulligan this hand. I'm going to keep this hand and hope we have a land on top. We did not. We had a Traxos. I'm going to hope we have another land on top. Any land is... It's okay. Okay. 
<laughs> Isn't there a dragon that's like an 8-9 for red? Yeah, Slumbering Dragon. It's a nice 3-3. Three, three. Oh, wow. This could be good if we hit the cards we need. Hey, that's pretty good. The funny thing is Deadpool is actually very, very cleverly written a lot of times. Breaking the fourth wall, like being... it's He's very witty. Um... The problem is I don't think people like Deadpool because of that. I think they just like it because he's got this wacky, he's a sl wacky slapstick character who does really crazy things. And I'm just like, you really don't appreciate this character for, like, I don't know. It just doesn't... I'm like, there's no way... I don't know. Okay, well, this guy's good. Sarkon's on ceiling one time. Traxos. Are we dead? No, not yet. It's close, though. It's not looking good. It's really... Let's make it a green. Deadpool allows people to act like dicks and then play... <laughs> oh. The funny thing is, I like Deadpool. I think he's great. Like, I think it's a great character. Uh, I enjoy all of the comics that have Deadpool in it. Uh, I enjoyed um, uh, Uncanny X-Force that had... Who wrote that? Was that Remender? Yeah, the, I, I, Rick Remender's run on Uncanny X-Force was utterly insane. It was one of the most fantastic runs ever. Um, Deadpool was fantastic in that. And uh, I enjoyed him in Brent Bendis's all-new X-Men storyline where he was, like, from the... Yeah, I don't want to give... I don't want spoilers. I think we're dead. We're probably dead, right? <laughs> cool. Pretty sure there's nothing we can draw here that will save us. That's not going to do it. On the bright side, this Nixithid is pretty big. Okay, well. I think we want some sort of, like, sweepers in the sideboard at the very least. What deals two damage that would keep our Sylvan carry added alive, I wonder? Hmm... Push, push, abrupt, abrupt. <laughs> Pyroclasm. Yeah, I'm just not sure if there's better ones. Whip Flare? That was, I'd rather just have Pyroclasm, right? Wouldn't that just kill me? Man, you guys are naming three winner ones when Pyroclasm exists. Oh, unsealing way too slow. Well, we might as well quit, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Really had a good time today. Unsealing is too slow, so uh, we're going to... Go do something else now. Thanks for uh, hanging out. Uh, Night's Whisper, maybe? What's the cut here? Night's Whisper might be too slow. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> it's just... Why are you incorrectly paying Talisman and non artifact? There, this is an artifact deck, you dummy. I got Traxos in here. Suck it. Oh, throw the triple. The triple Sarkhan's on ceiling. I got you. All right, we'll try this one. Coslex Return. That's actually pretty good. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Uh, bottom you. Yeah, this is why I don't like Nixithid, because our mana base is not completely... Like, double colors are not super easy for us. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely taking that. 
Yeah, I'm not going to take a million damage early for this Death Shadow. That's just not happening. Well, surgical to remove the key elves, you have to actually have a key elf in the graveyard. Like... Shaman of the Pact, Winnings Elite, Elvish Archer, Elvish Chancellor, and fuck, literally drew five cards off that. Wow. Absolutely amazing. So you still have Dwinnins Elite. You should have Pendlehaven. You discarded a forest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nope, you don't have Pendlehaven, so I guess you have one card I don't know about, maybe? Jesus, what does this even do here? Yeah, having one black here is pretty stupid. Maybe the forest should be another mountain. We don't have that many green cards. Also, what a flavor fail that the I Am Deadpool name is not playing a red-black deck. Two, three, four, five, six. I literally have no idea where the what, what they do or don't have in hand anymore is. Alright, so you, you played a Dwinnin's Elite and a Clan Caller. And a cavern, so you should have four cards. One, two, three. So, all right, this guy's gone. This guy's gone. So we know of these three. Sounds good. Oh my god, that's not doing anything. A lot of these cards don't do much without Sarkons on ceiling. Yeah, we can't. This is not. I don't like the way this looks at all. Like we're just playing green for Ronus and Sylvan Carry added here. And Talisman actually does the same job as Carry Added, only it triggers Traxos, which is nice. Let's take out the green. Stomping ground. We're going to do some reworking here. There's no real way to search. Idyllic Tutor searches out the untutor. Uh, uh, is it Carry Added? Carry Added's for ramp. We can't, this is not, what is that, what are you saying right now? <laughs> this is not. I like Kozilek's Return. Does Kozilek's Return come back? Do I even have? I think I have foils of this bad boy. Why isn't it showing up? What's going on? Oh, it did, okay. Uh, mana cost seven or greater. Yeah, all right, that's not coming back then. That's unfortunate. Oh, and it's also an Eldrazi, not a just as regular creature. Yeah. Okay. Uh, traverse the Elvenwald is not going to do that unless we have Delirium, and I have, n like, the odds of us hitting Delirium seem extremely low. I don't think we've had Delirium in one of these matches yet. Uh, it does not work with Aramag because it is not an Eldrazi creature. Emerge could be interesting. I wonder if Distended Mindbender is any good here. All this dust gets rid of our Sarkons on summoning and our both of these. I can't imagine that's going to be very good.
Black Sun, you need too much mana for. Like, for the same cost for three mana, you're getting neg one, neg one. And if it's four mana, if I'm paying four mana for a Black Sun, I'd rather just have a Damnation. I don't, I don't imagine I actually have a Thunder Blessed. Yeah. Not to say I wouldn't get one, but... What is five mana, seven, two? Triple Red is not super easy, right? What other lands do we have? Can we add Sulphurus Falls, I guess? Sulphurus... This is 21 lands. We could put like two Signets or Mind Stones. Probably Signet. Cairns could be good. This is, so this is 60 here. I don't know if that's correct. This feels like a lot. We can probably cut two of these. Cut a Swamp for an Urborg. Like, there's just no reason not to play one Urborg in a lot of your decks. All right. What is Scoria Worm? What the hell is that? What in the sh... Speaking of your upkeep, flip a coin. If you lose the flip, return it to its owner's hand. That's interesting. I don't actually hate that. That sounds pretty sick, actually. Wow, I'm actually sold on Scory Worm. Boros Reckoner? What does that guy do? Curry, you're coming up with some real weird suggestions here, buddy. Wow, Surgical's up to 42? Holy smokes. The problem with, like, Zaichi, we're not going to be able to cast six mana Massacre Worm that frequently. And it doesn't actually wipe the board. Well, I guess it, it probably wipes the board, maybe. Oh, I can get the Urza's one. What's this guy going for? Two cents? Deal. I'm getting four of these bad boys. Oh, I'm loving it. This is <laughs> this is great. Take out the etched monstrosities. <coughs> <coughs> Not to be confused with the Scoria Elemental. So what do we have to trigger this guy? We have this, this, and these. So a bunch of different cards, but it's also just wiping their board. I think this is okay. Let's try this out. Oh, we wanted, actually, we wanted sweepy sweeps, didn't we? Hmm. Is this even a Heartless Summoning deck anymore? I feel like we're just getting closer to the Conley Woods version, but I feel like Conley is actually probably closer. Isn't Spite Mare just the worst Boros Reckoner? Oh... Well, we already have these for, for the, the Sarkons on Sealing early, but it also lets us untrap, untap Traxos. I like Scoria Worm with Heartless Summoning because it only costs three, but like the problem is you're already going to have Heartless Sum Heart Sarkons on Sealing, right? That's the problem with Heartless Summoning here, is that you're going to have to have four mana to play Sarkons on Sealing. So as long as you have four mana... Oh, Spite Mare because it, it it becomes two, sure. But what's what was the point of it in general though? Like what's the point of Unfortunately, Blistering Firecat is not a legal modern card. Sport Mare and Boros Reckoner are fun. Okay. I don't think we need the Heartless Summoning. It's weird to say, but, like, 
it only reduces the cost on like these th these guys and I don't think that's very good I think we do want like some sort of board wipe let's put three anger in Scory Worm seems great. Man, that is... Oh no, bounce Muscory Worm. Replay Muscory Worm. Well, we're not done with the sideboard yet. Hmm. No him. Uh, no, our, our modern deck does not have him to Torok. If that's what you're asking. <laughs> oh, man. I don't understand. Maybe Fatal Push? Like, just one Fatal Push in the main deck? Maybe two Fatal Push in the main deck. Yeah, let's do that. Alright, cool. Or two Inquisitions, maybe? The problem is we don't have any ants. I guess we don't need Fatal Push if, we're, if our goal is to be Sarkon's Unsealing. I don't like Hunted Horror just because when you Hunted Horror you give them guys. It just doesn't feel ideal. Yeah, Bolt is actually pretty good. I don't think we care about Bolt. We're not done with the sideboard yet. We're not working on the sideboard right now. Just relax. We'll get to the sideboard in a second. We're not going to just jump into a queue. Uh, what was I thinking? Um, we have Thoughtseize. Inquisition was the other card. I want to be able to sh make sure they don't have an answer for our Sarkon. And a lot of times Inquisition is basically just a removal spell. So how many creatures do we have that are going to trigger? Uh, how are we getting Delirium in this deck? Like, I, I don't think it's likely our, our artifacts are going to go to the graveyard. So we're going to have... We have no instance. <clears throat> so a creature and a sorcery are, are going to be our most common. Maybe in a land, right? Other than that, like, I don't see a fourth card that's going to go to the graveyard. Like, if they luckily kill a Sarkon's Unsealing. I have no idea how we're going to get... How we're going to get Delirium by turn two, no less. Like, that seems super ambitious. Uh, Gargadon's a, a Gargadon is... Do you still cast it from Suspend? I think you do. I don't think I did see the Captain Marvel poster. I feel like I should have, though. Alright, so what are we at? 60 cards? I think this is fine for now, and we'll see how it goes. What about, wait, we just don't need Bolt. We have Anger, and we're trying to wipe the... We have Sarkons on Ceiling for Bolts. Um, okay, get rid of this. We have one extra slot here. I'm probably just going to put a fourth anger in. There are certain matchups where it's just very, very good. And I think both of our first matches would be nice. All right, we're just going to run this bad boy out there and see what happens. Okay, add Bobble, Street Wraith, Bolt, and Faithless Looting. Yeah, that's worth it. Let's do that. Let's change the entirety of the deck. Let's, well, let's add 16 different cards. <laughs> Oh, so that we can add four more cards, which are the discard spell to Delirium. So now we have an extra 20 cards. Yeah, no big deal. Just take 20 cards out. <clears throat> Same thing. Um, I'll keep this hand because it doesn't seem terrible. Oh, Azusa seems great in this deck. Wow. All right. See you later, Azusa. I did answer. I said I have not seen the new Captain Marvel poster, unfortunately. <clears throat> yep. So you played Radiant Fountain, you played Explore, and now I know two of the three cards in your hand. 
Yeah, this doesn't seem like a great matchup for us. Do we have to cut a land? Do you have another? What do you got here? A Primeval Titan? As I bet it's a summoning trap, or a summoning uh, summoner's pact. And they're like, is there a way I can use this right now? To get my Primeval Titan? And the answer is no. So just show me the summoner's pact. And I'll take it. Oh, another explorer. Okay. That was not exciting. <clears throat> I am unimpressed. I'll bounce my radiant fountain. <laughs> Alright, so we know your hand then. That's pretty good. Oh, it's a scoria worm. Nailed it. Just gonna play Nixithid here, and maybe next time we can play Blood Crypt Untapped and Sulphur Springs. Choose an opponent. If this makes me choose an opponent, I'm just gonna cringe so hard. Okay, they didn't. Chosen player is Rusty Shackleford, 99. <clears throat> Ancient Staringos. Walking Blursta. Okay, so your hand is these and a Radiant Fountain. Okay, so your hand is these. Good to know. Ballista for two. Okay, so if we anger and then they shoot this twice, we actually just lose our guy. So that's unfortunate. That is the worst linking I've ever seen. Come on, Undrum Tuna. You can do better than this. So what we can we can exile three? We're just gonna out, we're just gonna get in there and bust you up a little bit. Bust your chops a little bit. I also have seen this poster. I'm not sure if this poster is legit. Is this a real poster? Because that's definitely a scroll in the upper left, and I wasn't sure if Marvel was even able to use scrolls. I feel like this is not their actual poster. I don't think this is a real poster. I'm going to be honest with you. Google it. Figure it out. Somebody do some sleuthing and let me know if that's a real Captain Marvel poster. I don't really want to die to this guy out of nowhere. I don't know if that's a possibility, but... We also have Tasker, but no way to activate Tasker. I don't think I like Tasker in the deck anymore. I think Angler's probably just better. What? Come on. What are you doing? One, two, three. Use the use the mana that's given to you. Use the mana that's given to you. No. Oh, uh, we can't activate that because you don't have any blue or green. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I think because they're they're literally just using on the Captain Marvel post they're li they're literally using the Ronin. So here's here's my thoughts on this. <clears throat> All right. So this is a scroll. Uh, a scroll is part of the Fantastic Four pantheon the universe. So if it's if there and this was this poster was likely made or the movie was made 
uh, before Marvel had finalized the deal with Fox. So uh, I, I'm going to assume that they wouldn't have the rights to the scrolls. Um, this is just the dude from Guardians of the Galaxy, just stuck on the poster. I don't know who this is. I, I, I don't know who that is. And this is just Ronan from Guardians of the Galaxy. So I feel like they just like actually took a bunch of characters from existing Marvel things and just pl put them on the thing. They took the things from the other things and put them on the thing, if you guys know what I'm saying. That does not look like Jude Law. That looks like a cross. That looks like <clears throat> you, Jackman. I'm going to, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to assume you don't have a red for this. We know these two. We know you have a radiant fountain in hand. So I'm just going to play this and hope I don't die. It's Deadpool in disguise. Oh, man. Good times, good times. Ronan may be confirmed. That's fine. But this literally looks like it was just taken out of the Guardians movie. It just looks like... It doesn't look like it's actually a, a new Ronan image. As is too odd, Nick Fury. <laughs> Gas. Yep. Alright, I don't think we're dead here. Did you just go pew, pew, pew? Triple pew? Three pews? And then we get to... If we if we draw land, we can untap, play Scoria Worm? Oh, come on, man. Let's do it. Let's Scoria Worm. <laughs> In modern. Fantastic. Oh! I mean, it could be real. I don't know. It doesn't... It's, it's setting off some red flags for me, but... You know... I'm no expert. So we still know these are your two cards in hand. Seems good. All right. <clears throat> I mean, either way, we get to play. That's actually nice because they gave us a way to... All right. So we're going to go Thought Seize You. Oh, we know the cards. So that seems bad. So we're going to pay a black, play a Death Shadow... Yield to that. Kill all your things. Where did we find the perfect card in uh, for Scory Worm? Uh, that would be a little gentleman named Monsonster. I mean, they can still top deck Primeval Titan, right? And it's just insane. Yeah, I think if, I think we just have to fade one Primeval Titan slash Summoner's Trap, Summoner's Pact. Although I don't know if that kills us or not. Wait. Yeah, we can, we can block. It's not ideal. Scory Worm is greater than Primeval Titan. That is a correct assessment. Oh, we just win the game. I like it. I like it. <clears throat> I like it a lot. I'm gonna bring I'm gonna take out the anger. I don't think this is an anger deck. We're gonna bring in the Colagon's Command and the Fulminator Mages Faux Show. Um, take out one Scoria Worm. Maybe a Nixithid. This is not a super heavy unsealing deck. We just take a bunch of nerds out. We can bring in Collective Brutality. We might actually want Surgical Extraction. If we can hit like a Primeval Titan or something, it's very, very good. 
We might actually just win the game off of that. I think that seems good. I have to be honest with you, if you ever get bored when you cast Trap Rotates, that's I'd love for you to play that summoning trap deck. That's something I, I could see definitely doing that. That summoning trap deck was a blast. Alright. I don't know if I even like Urborg in this matchup because I don't want to give your I guess it doesn't matter. All your lands make mana anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I think we're definitely cutting one land. What a little cutie. Nope, not going to do that. All right, let's try this guy. A braid? Fascinating. Azusa, we only have two lands. It's probably, it's got to be Summoner's Pact, right? <clears throat> Azusa literally does the same thing as, as this guy. It's my snake impression. Nice one. Nice top deck. A Boros Garrison. That's pretty boring. That was a good scouting pose. Appreciate it, buddy. Appreciate it. Preach. Gemstone Mine. Followed by Boros Garrison. Okay. I'm just going to play this Boros Garrison. Okay. Simic Growth Chamber. Bouncing Forest. Well, we have nothing to do, so we're going to pass. That is unexciting. And do 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 So you just play Azusa, play your garrison, play your other things. Oh, Bajukabog, get rid of my Inquisition. Well, pretty sure my energy just cut out. Or my power just flickered and the internet's still fine because this guy's still playing his cards. Well, <clears throat> guess we're good. That was weird. Alright, so Boros Garrison comes down. You have Bog in hand. You played the forest. So you have two cards. A Braid and a Bog. Huh. Well then. Why don't they attack with this guy? That's fascinating to me. This guy. Yeah, we're definitely taking out one land. What do you need? You need this red, I think. We're going to get rid of this Boros Garrison. Oh, they might not be attacking because of Death Shadow? I don't know. One, two, three, four. Puts us to 13. We can take a point, take another point. Traxo, say. Did they not play land? That's fascinating. So we're going to take out one land. Probably the Urborg. What are we going to add? I don't know. We'll figure it out soon. Boop, boop. All right. Actually, is this a this is a legendary? Actually, Urborg untaps Traxos as well, which is pretty sweet. Oh, it's whenever you cast. Never mind. I guess that does not do it. 
we could play Traxos next turn and play this just to see if it, it works. I don't know. I have my doubts, but... Yeah. Well, you, you, you might have wanted to hold that guy. You got it. Graveyard's gone. Oh, yeah. Grow the Death Shadow. If we go to nine, we can play Death Shadow, which I think is fine. Okay, so your last card is... I don't know. Could be anything. Could even be a boat. Uh, we could just make them discard their last card. That's pretty cool. Like, kill this guy, make them discard? Yeah, let's do that. It might be a Primeval Titan or a Summoner's Pact. That'd be pretty cool. So we're going to say, choose target player, you, and... It's got to be the 1-2, right? It's just better. I assume it's better? I don't actually know. What if it was a Primeval Titan? Oh, it was just another Azusa. Okay. Four four gentlemen. All right. Well, they're in top deck mode, and we have a uh, a Death Shadow, which we can grow increasingly larger with our Sulfurous Springs. That could be worse. Explore, huh? And then they played Slayer Stronghold. Okay. That's just a big dude. Also, Urborg turns this into a land they can keep using. I'd rather not have that be the case. Also, Scorpion blocks Primeval Titan pretty well. But they are pretty far from casting a Primeval Titan. They have to draw Primeval Titan and they'll only have... They can cast it, but then they're not going to be able to activate it and still attack us for a million. Yep, seems fine. Scorpion Worm one time. One time. Never lucky. Well, we're cracking this anyway. We're going to deal eight because it puts you to a... Half your life, so both these guys kill you. I mean, if Scory Worm stays in play, that is. So. Still, playing some Scory Worms in Modern. Choice. Choice. Also, being able to recast this every single turn with the Sarkons on ceiling. Ooh. That is gas. Oh, here we go. This does not actually... Like, you don't... And you have to pay next turn. It's obviously Primeval Titan. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, sure. So now you can get a blue-white land. Uh, Amulet into, into Titan is pretty insane. Like, that's a pretty fantastic series of draws where I've drawn land. Land, I believe. 
I mean, we played Scorio on last turn, so we clearly... I we might have drawn it last turn, actually. Or it was in our hand. I don't know. It's still no Primeval Titan, that's for sure. They're going to get Boros Garrison and something else. They're going to get plus two Vigilance and Haste. We're going to block. And then they're going to give it double strike, so it's actually going to kill our guy, which is pretty unfortunate. Because they get up to four lands right now. A blocker, a life guy, sure. Actually, you can't... Oh, that doesn't seem correct. Right? Like, now you don't get to attack with your Primeval Titan. I would have thought you got Boros... Oh, maybe, they're, maybe they have one Boros Garrison? Oh, that's pretty good then. And lost the flip again. All right. Oh, boy. Well, that's pretty good for Traxos, actually. Yeah, now they can just block with their plant token. That's pretty sad. No, I do not think we can play out our hand. That is not how math work music manly. Like, we can go two for talisman, and then we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we have five and four. That's nine. It's not going to work that way. I mean, I'd like to keep this in hand one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but unless we have a ninth mana, we can't play both of these. So we can play basically one thing in our hand. I have to assume there's going to be a turn where Scory Worm can stick. They can also just not block this take eight. <laughs> I forgot you have to pay for talisman. Yes, that is a that is a that is a bug, not a feature, unfortunately. Man, unsealing here would be pretty sweet. We would have been able to have been like, boop, boop, boop. I feel like Scory Worm is definitely the piece of the puzzle that we're missing. We still have game three, right? I was like, if you don't block here, it's super greedy. Going to one is not ideal, and you don't even know if I could street rate this thing. Oh, they do have to pay four this turn, which is nice. Well, it's okay. We've played Scory Worm three times so far. We have not won a flip. So. See you later, gemstone mine. Sure. You just want to trade with my guy? Get your double strike land. If it's double strike and trample, we're dead, but I don't know. I don't know if it is. Oh, you only get two lands. You only get that one and something else. And I don't think... I think you need four. Sun Home is red-white, so... Vesuva copying Simic Signet. Oh, you're going to give it pro red. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is definitely not a deck that's going to have two Sajiri steps in it. Like, that just doesn't make any sense. That is not ideal. Yep, that's pretty good. All right. Oh, we took out some unsealings. Hmm, I think I like that worse now that I've looked at it. I also don't think our odds of killing a Primeval Titan is pretty high, so... Yeah, maybe we just keep the Sarkons on ceilings in. Like, all of our creatures trigger it, except for the Fulminator Mage. Yeah, let's give it another go. I like it. Uh, I'm going to keep this hand. This seems good. It's got every it's got all the pieces we need, so we'll see if we can turn it into a a success story. Well, they went to six. Went to five. And kept. Traxos being legendary is not ideal, but I still think that's fine. Would you look at that? Lucky, 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 lucky. Lucky, 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 lucky. All right, Blood Crypt it is. <laughs> well, that just seems fine. Oof. They have no second land? And they whiffed on the... Did you just not take a land with stirrings, or did you whiff? This is all very interesting. I'm going to take the explore, actually. Like, I don't care if you cast the braid, amulets, you're way far off of playing amulet. <laughs> oh my god. Lucky, 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 lucky. Oh boy. Another amulet? What? What is even happening? Amulet number one. Dual land. Yep. Oh my god, dude. These top decks are insane. Uh, we didn't fulminate because we didn't have a third land. We had to find it. Oh, we, did we hit the Bloodstain Mire? Because I wanted to find a fourth land, I guess? I don't know. Why don't you not worry about it? How about that? One hundred percent we did. One hundred percent. A thousand percent we had the land. Okay. <laughs> cool. I mean, because also because they didn't have any non-basics in play. Like, they only had a forest, so they literally had the top deck a non-basic. 
uh, they had one turn. Otherwise, our plan was to just draw into. Uh, it just didn't feel correct. So if you play this, I'm going to respond to your triggers and kill it. <laughs> Do you play it? Oh, nope, 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 nope. Peace out. And they still have to return their forest? Oh, God, this is brutal. Oh, this is brutal. <laughs> oh, my God. Woo! That's no good. Wow. So they can't actually play... Alright, so this is your hand in a forest. Oh my god, I finally got the baby horse to let me pet her, and then she wouldn't let me stop petting her. I pet her for about She's like, this is alright. Oh, we just win the game, apparently. That's pretty sweet. That's nice. Alright, we took one card out. What are we going to add? Is there any way to get a Sarkons on ceiling easier? <laughs> oh, Sarkon's on ceiling. I don't. I don't like the Tasker anymore. I'm off Tasker because of the ability, the activated ability. We just we we started at Jund and we switched away from Jund because there's just no incentive to do it. I mean, these are the same as Mana Dorks. And, uh, I, I don't want to fill the deck with, like, Birds of Paradise and, like, Llanowar Elves, because then they just have targets on their heads. Um, we have not drawn a Mogus yet, which is pretty sad. Nexithid is also pretty good at filling out this Mogus. So what do we have to have to, to turn on Mogus? Four, one, two, three, four, five, six... Seven. If we have one of each of these, Mogus can attack. That's pretty cool. What else? What else? Hmm. We actually took out Faithless Looting. I just don't think it's very good. I don't think you need it for knights for... We have no way to abuse the graveyard. We're not delving. We're not flashing things back. It's just literally card disadvantage. I mean, I'd rather just play more Sign and Bloods. Is Sign and Blood better than Knight's Whisper? I don't know because we don't have a... I guess these are the only two lands that can't cast a Sign and Blood. And Sign and Blood can kill the opponent out of nowhere. Uh, we don't really need bolts. Sark Sarkons on ceiling is literally bolts for days, which is the point. Like, we just, just, we're not looking for a bolt effect. We're looking for, like, ways to either cast this or to work efficiently with this. What's the best sign in blood? Let's go with that M10. I feel like we're just getting closer to Conley's list, but I think, like, I mean, he's obviously played it more, and he's optimized the choices more than we have. Um... 
Scoria Worm was great. I did like Simeon Spirit Guide, but again, I don't think we have a problem casting this quickly. The only card Simeon Spirit Guide is going to help out with is Sarkon's Unsealing or Nixithid, right? Like, we could play a turn one Signet, but that doesn't really do anything for us. It doesn't help Sign and Blood. It doesn't help any of the one drops. So, it lets us cast turn two Anger, which is probably not needed. Turn two Nixithid, which is going to be super weak. And then turn three any one of these, but these already do that. So... And these also untap Traxos, which has a, a significant effect. Hmm. I'm really tempted to just put one Yargle in for the for the for the uh, for the memes. Idyllic Tutor was a consideration. How are we ever casting an Apex of Power? I agree with you. Crackling Doom seems like it's really... A f I, I like Crackling Doom a lot, actually. Like, just as a card. And I actually... I wondered that myself. I was like, why is no one playing Crackling Doom? That is a good question. I'm going to add one more Signet. Is that good? I don't know. <laughs> Matthew Ori, dude, these are awesome. <laughs> oh man, look at that tiny little horse, dude. Oh, these are fantastic. Oh, what a cutie. That's great. Because why play Crackling Doom when I can pay a pass? Well, here's the thing about magic cards. You don't actually have to just choose one. Magic doesn't force you to only pick one card. You can actually play multiple different cards. Isn't that weird? Colicon's command does not do the same thing as as crackling as crackling doom does in any way, shape, or form, though, right? Like crackling doom makes you sacrifice the largest creature, right? Yeah, creature with greatest power, which is great. Like that's just nuts. Beseech the queen. Oh, I like that. Yep, not gonna pay. Not still not playing hunted horror because it actually makes the creatures. Which is not great for us. Alright, none of these are how you spell Beseech. There you go. Oh, triple black. Oh, yeah, I like that. Oh, hey, oh, uh, oh, number of lands you control. Ooh, ooh. Not great. Maybe it's actually fine. Is there a cheaper tutor in modern? What about this? What about two Masterminds acquisitions? Yeah, I don't want to miss the mana up for Idyllic Tutor. It also only searches for one card. Masterminds acquisition actually seems up pretty insane. Like, it, it puts us off a turn, right? Like, we can't actually use it on... But Beseech the Queen, we can't cast on turn three and still get a Sarkon ceiling, a Sarkon's unsealing for turn four anyway, because Beseech relies on number of lands you control. So we're going to try this out instead. 
Vampiric Tutor seems good. If Flesh Rither? If Flesh Rither has a three converted mana cost, it's not going to be able to find a Sarkon's Unsealing. That is the exact... Yeah, then you're only going to be transmuting it for three mana cost. Wait, hold on. Yeah, that's not going to... Oh, it's... Oh, it's Transfigure, not Transmute. Oh, is this a... Is this a... Sacrifice at search your library for oh yeah, but you have to cast it though. So you have to it's a sacrifice. So you play it for four and then you Yeah, Demir Houseguard is a four current mana cost transmute, which is actually what Conley's running, but like why wouldn't you just play Mastermind's acquisition when you have like so many good silver bullets in the sideboard, right? Like you can just go get an anger of the gods or you can get a whatever. Like isn't if your if your plan is to actually Demir Houseguard, does he cost three? To transmute because that might make a difference oh it does i see okay okay well now we're getting somewhere Huh. Oh, I see what's happening now. Gravecrawler bridge, huh? Okay, well, I got a bridge to sell you. I don't really want your bridge in the graveyard. I don't want your gravecrawler in the graveyard. Let's get rid of walking bliss, I guess. You have two Gargadons? Fascinating. No, this is should be the Vengevine deck. Yeah, being able to transmute on three for a uh, Sarkon's Unsealing seems pretty good. There's a Gargadon gone. Two Gargadons gone. Okay. Good to know. So you have Bridge and Gravecrawler in your hand. We have two Swamps in the deck, I think, and we've drawn both of them with an Anger of the Gods in our hand. That's comical. Oof. I mean, anger kills all of these guys and exiles them. I don't know why it doesn't seem good. Like, they don't get to trigger off this because it doesn't die. Gravecrawler can't come back. And they can't bring other Gravecrawlers back. They have Bridge in one other card. I really don't want... Ah! Double Gargadon seems good. Yeah. That's a fair point. Um, Guess we'll just play Nixithid here. 5-5. Five, five. Double Gargagon's gar 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 kind of funny. <laughs> uh, this is the weirdest magic card ever. Bridge from below, like... Alright, well, they're doing it anyway, so... 
They got rid of a neonate, a becomingments, and a bushwhacker. Seems fine. See you later, bye. <laughs> oh, I see. Look what's happening. What a bunch of cuties. Alright, you're done here? One more, okay. <laughs> Woo! Four mana, four mana, three mana, three mana, can't cast. Gets her to bridge. Four, five, six. They have 12 counters. They're going to lose two, so they go to 10. Uh, I think we might just die to double Gargan on here, which is pretty comical. So they can go Gravecrawler, Gravecrawler, Gravecrawler. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And they need 10 for double, double Gargadon. Jesus. Yep, block and sack. Block and sack and block and sack and block and sack and It's like boots and cats. Yep, if they hit any card that they can actually utilize here, we are dead. So you have nine. If they draw like a bridge or like a fatal push or something. Uh oh. Huh. So it's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. Interesting. And now it's like, even if we get Anger here, they can sack both these guys to bring this Gargadon out. Hey, a second red mana. Look at that. <laughs> the funny thing is, if we had one more land, we could go Unsealing. And then Death Shadow. For the win winnerino. I mean, presuming they don't block this guy with a Gargadon. Sack, sack, a Gargadon. Yeah, we block the guard. Yeah, we're just going to go to the next game here. I don't foresee this ending favorably for us. Despite that, Anger does seem pretty good. So does Surgical Extraction, maybe? <sighs> really have no interest in killing any of their creatures, so we're not going to do that.
Jack, thank you so much for the resub. Really appreciate it. Welcome back. Always a pleasure. Here's the weird things. Not a fan. All right, whatever. I will play first. Yeah, I guess we'll keep this. Double Mogus is not ideal, but... Bomad Courier, your hand is literally four lands and a bridge. I like it. Burn for 14 with shadow? What does that mean? Wouldn't it only burn for 8? How are you getting 14 out of it? Squee, Bloodstained Mire gone. It doesn't deal seven if you play a creature with power of seven. It deals four to either... It deals four to a creature, to any target, or it deals four to everything if you have a power of seven. Man, these draws have been... pretty all right. Land. Did it. Nailed it. Is this good for us? I mean, Mogus actually gives them an outlet to sacrifice their guy. But I feel like we can't not play Mogus, so... I guess we're stuck. They're probably like, thanks, now I have a way to get Stitcher's Supplier in the graveyard? Okay. And they get a Zombone from the bridge. Ugh. This is almost, this is almost, this is, this is better for them. This is 100% better for them than it is for us. But they didn't hit anything good, so that's okay. So we know they have Arid Mesa Swamp and Bridge. Are they just going to cast Bridge? That doesn't make any sense, right? Oh, they're just going to cast a Squee. That seems good. Boom, boom, boom. Burr, 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 burr. Sorry, on the ceiling. We're playing a deck with Mogus and Scoria Worms. That's pretty funny to me. They now have two bridges, so that's actually pretty bad. Mogus is just a liability at this point. This game did not go as planned, unfortunately. Yikes. Yeah, 
Yeah, like we can just play a Death Shadow to get rid of the bridges, but I don't know if that was better than Scoria Worm. All right, one time. Hey, we did it. This is actually pretty good. Do they have a Gargadon exiled? Oh, they do. Fascinating. Oh, this is really good, actually. Good lord. They're gonna have to they're gonna sack a million things to their stupid Gargadon. Can we just go down to one Mogus and one Traxos because they're Legendary? One, two, three, four. Yep. You're going to do a thing. I'm just going to have six here. I don't care. They only have one Gargadon, so we can actually favorably attack here. That should be fine. Getting Squee back is pretty obnoxious though but I guess they'll have to sacrifice like a bunch of lands in order to do that So they got a four here. It's not nothing. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, Gargadon's coming down. Greater Gargles. And they just hope I don't return this, I guess. they're obviously attacking for nine I think one of your cards is bridge wow that's 13 though that's still not lethal there's no other venge vines in your graveyard oh no Gargadon. Fascinating. What's it going to be? Lost the flip. Never lucky. Oh, I didn't see they leave it. There's a lot going on, so I'm not super concerned with it. I will block. All right. Sure. Boom, boom, boom. Just that guy, huh? I'll go to six here because, oh god, we have to win this flip though, right? One time, one time, one time, one time, oh, Jesus crying out loud. If we block here, we actually can't play Death Shadow because he'd still be at 15. Alright, well, 
God, we lo we've lost like four out of five flips. Yeah, if we get a death, yeah, if we get a Sarkons on ceiling for Death Shadow, it's utterly insane. But I'm pretty sure they just take two here, right? Oh, wow. Okay, if they took two, we'd have to block here, and we'd still take six and be dead. That's actually pretty good for us. Hurricane, thank you so much for the for the for the sub. Really appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. Uh, this deck is a critique by someone, so it's not. No, it's not a. A results deck. Now we're blocking. <laughs> yep, got a block here. And we have one draw here, I think. If we hit a land, we can play two things and we're still dead because we have three things. Oh, fascinating. All right, so we'll block. One time. It does let us play Worm and Death Shadow while we're at six. So we can actually take these two. Yeah, that's actually not bad. Oh, wow. We have to go to three, which is okay, actually. Three is actually the magic number here. Nope, not going to do that. Wow, can we win this game still? I mean, I would have preferred to be able to find a basic here, but it was a Verdant Catacomb and not a Blood Crypt, so. All right, well, they don't have another Grave... They don't have another uh, zombie in play, so... Not the worst pitch. All right, we're doing it, we're doing it. Both of these are lethal, so they have to block both. Oh my God, dude, are you serious? If they block here, they can, no, they can't do anything. I actually like Thud slash Rite of Consumption slash all those things. Uh, they're just gonna choose to sacrifice something. They wouldn't draw two, or they wouldn't they wouldn't take two. They would just sacrifice a guy. If they draw like Gravecrawler, we're dead. God, we're so close here. It's really frustrating. Actually, we're not, right? They get blood. Yeah, we have a blocker. So we actually... That we take two. Oh, wow. Aggressive. If they go to one here and they don't attack, it's oh okay. They're just going. They're just going. <sighs> My God, the intensity is real here. Scoria worm, kind of doing work maybe. I've been hitting heads and we've been losing. I'm tempted to hit tails because I feel like we have to be able to hit a tails at some point. They didn't leave a black up, which is good for us, but. Nope, we're gonna use. Absolutely incredible. Ah. <sighs> 
Yeah, so the last change I would make is bring in Demir Houseguard. I think this is probably a better, this is a basically a three mana Mastermind's Acquisition. I like that better because it does guarantee us, like we can play this on three and get Sarkhan's Unsealing for four, and then we have things like Death Shadow. Yeah, this is the final list. This is probably what I'd end up going with if I had the choice. Um, I think it's close to Conley's list. Uh, Conley has Hunted Horrors. We have Scory Worms. I think Scory Worms probably better. You get to keep playing it. I mean, by the time you have Sarkons on Ceiling out, Scory Worm should not be an issue to cast. And I think he has Mind Stone instead of Signet, but I kind of like Signet for the color restrictions better. Um, all of these untapped Traxos. We also have Traxos and more Mogus's Mogis. Um, one more? One more what? What are you saying right now? This is six copies of Unsealing, essentially, so I don't think we need one more, really. Uh, these can also help us find Mogus or Traxos, so that's pretty cool. But yeah, this is this is the final list I'd probably go with. Um, I, I think our matches were very close. One more match. It's been two and a half hours so far on just this deck. I'm probably going to cut it right now, because this, this is a good amount of time, but... Um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hope you appreciated the. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the changes that we made and the the process we went through to get there. Um, and uh, slam those like and subscribe buttons and check me out on Twitch and Patreon. Both the links are in the description below. And if you want to have your own deck critiqued or and run through a series of matches and make made changes on stream, like uh, be sure to check out my Twitch profile for information on how to do that. Thank you, and I'll see you guys next time.